Greetings, this is Shakina of the New Earth Healers interview show. And today we have Bishop Abdul or Bishop Bashir or doctor. What is it that you prefer to be called exactly? Okay. Um, however, I did notice you do carry the title of bishop as well. Do you agree that uh, titles come with a lot of responsibility, a heavy responsibility? Well, I do agree they come with responsibility. Uh, not necessarily always heavy, but uh, there is a responsibility that comes with each, uh, let's say, change of, of, of how you're functioning in the world. And, uh, recently, actually, this last year, almost a year ago now, was uh, sent to the post of Bishop in the Genesis 2 Church of Health and Healing, which basically means that I'm the Bishop of the country of Costa Rica, which uh, allows me to be the authority over the other ministers, in a sense, or the responsibility of organizing uh, churches and uh, venues where we can help other people to heal. Wow, okay, so uh, can you tell me further who is Abdul K. Bashir and more of what your function is there in Costa Rica or in, in general? Well, Abdul, uh, basically, you know, you know I, I function as a servant. Uh, I help other people to heal and to discover their life purpose on a daily basis. Uh, that's what I live and breathe for. Uh, I have uh, been blessed to be able to get shared gifts. Um, uh, I to do what I do. Um, a lot of things happen through my my physical body. And so um, I guess uh, <laughs> um, who I am is uh, a helper, a healer, okay. a brother. All right, and, and tell me, at this stage of your life, what is actually the truest desire of your heart um, along with the healing of others, helping others? Well, the truest desire of my heart really is uh, to, to help other people to see their higher self, mm -hmm. to Yes. So it, every opportunity I have to do that is what my heart beats for. Yes, of course. So, Abdul, I noticed in your bio that it says you were once paralyzed from the neck down. Can you tell us a little more about that experience that you had? I um, say it's been about 20 years ago, I guess. 1994, I did find myself in the hospital, took myself to the hospital uh, because I was suffering from symptoms of weakness in my body and, uh, and numbness as well and no longer to be able to, it, was, it became very, very difficult to, to function. And so uh, after actually bowling in a, bowling in a tournament, uh, one this morning, I took my myself to the hospital to get the symptoms looked at. Yes. And the doctors did a lot of tests and CAT scan and, and, and otherwise and came up inconclusive. And so the doctor at the time was very concerned uh, that I had these symptoms and he didn't find anything with the test that he had done. Mm -hmm. So he told me that uh, he was going to call a neurologist now to come look at me as well. And during that um, checkup, the neurologist also discovered that there was something abnormal happening because also for those tests of trying to stick me with needles and uh, test my temperature with hot and cold items, he saw that I was not responsive to those either. Wow. And so he kept me overnight, suggested to I was to stay overnight for 
additional testing. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it took three days before they found this tumor in my, after doing an MRI, they found this tumor that was bleeding uh, in my cervical spine. And the fact that it was bleeding meant actually I was actually dying uh, and they needed to do emergency surgery to save my life, which once they performed the surgery, they discovered that the tumor that I had created had also the nerves that come out of the top of the spine that connect to the brain where it meshed in the tumor. So during the surgery, uh, when they made the discovery, in order to stop the bleeding and cut the tumor out, they had to cut nerves out. Mm, mm. And so that resulted in me being paralyzed from the neck down and mm. unable to, yeah, not, not only unable to, to walk or move, but unable to speak as well. Really? Wow. For a short time. Yeah. But you came out of uh, that, yeah. Definitely. Uh, helping 
Okay, now, Abdul, I, I do have another question uh, real quick. Uh, do you feel that your unattached or your um, impersonal reaction to realizing that you were immobile neck down, was that a result of your, your uh, rebirth, so to speak? Or would you have reacted that way before you had the experience of, you know, reawakening and having that still small voice speak to you and tell you what your your next um, life venture would be about? Well, you know, the whole thing was an experience in itself. First of all, never being in a hospital before, being basically healthy. Uh, the fact that, you know, would walk myself into a hospital and have the experience unfold, you know, and I, you know, tried to resist it right to the end. Uh, you know, I, when the doctor suggested I stay overnight, I, uh, Said, well, you know, I'll, I'll come back tomorrow, you know, and uh, if it was not for the help of my wife that came in at that very moment and said, oh, no, no, you're going to find out what's going on, because I had been experiencing headaches before that, uh, when I would get home in the evening, very sharp pains to my head, and kind of thought it was a brain tumor that I was having, um, with cell phones just coming into play and me having one. Uh, thinking that, you know, I was getting symptoms of that. But the experience in itself at that moment was just that, an experience. I had spent the first three days surrendering and, and really speaking to the to Creator about uh, bringing me home, actually. I was pretty much done with being in a body at that moment. Yes. And so my surprise at just being a second chance because I was like, again, uh, at that point I had no concerns about being, uh, you know, on earth anymore prior to that uh, surgery. So okay. it was all a new experience that I was in and I was, uh, because I couldn't speak about it and you know, people were speaking to me, I was just a witness uh, to life uh -huh. at that point. Yes. Okay, so Ab Abdul, I'm interested. I, I I know you're New York born, and I'm really interested to know how did you end up directing a healing uh, yoga center in Costa Rica? How did you get there? Well, it uh, followed. Uh, of course, I had to go through some physical therapies and things while. I after I came out of the hospital while I was still in the hospital. Uh, and then, you know, I started having visions. And so I actually had a, a, a repeated vision or dream of my brother being with some, uh, some woman, actually, in this case. Uh, and he was living in another state, in the state of Georgia. So I would end up in Georgia um, because actually I contacted him to find out you know, who was this woman that I keep having this dream with, with him about. And she turned out to be the president of the Natural Healers Network down there. And I said, well, I need to speak to her. So he put, put us in touch and we had a conversation. And during that conversation, she said very kind of pointedly that I need to come there. And it sounded as if that was the next thing for me to do. And so, um, uh, 1996, I actually relocated from New York to Georgia, where my 